Hello! Today we will work on Class 1 Conventional Cavity Design on Mandibular Second Premolar. Before we start the preparation, let us review the anatomy of the tooth. Here, in this type of second premolar, we have the three cos type. Same with your typodont. You have the buccal cos, the mesolingual cos, and the smaller distolingual cusp. Of course, you still have the mischial triangular fossa, the distal triangular fossa where you will place your dovetail, your central groove, and your lingual groove. Now, we have seen, we have reviewed the anatomy, we're ready to do the preparation. Before you start the preparation, you have to form a mental image of your prep. And this is how it would look like. Now let's go back to our tooth. The dovetail. The dovetail is always placed in your Michel triangular fossa and distal triangular fossa. Take note, in this distal part, it's a little bit curved. But you still have to follow the anatomy. And then for every cusp, you have one mountain to protect the cusp. The cusp is a stress-bearing area during mastication. So it should always be protected during cavity preparation. Then you have the mesolingual cusp. And the smaller distolingual cusp. Dovetail should be parallel to the proximal surface. Again, dovetail should be parallel to the proximal surface. For you to have uniform width of your marginal ridge. The marginal ridge width for mandibular second premolar could be 1 millimeter to 1.2 millimeter. That is to protect the tooth from stress during mastication. The marginal ridge is a stress bearing area. Same with the cusp. So we now have two stress bearing areas during mastication the cusps and the marginal ridges. Bucolingually, your dovetail, dovetail, bucolingually is around 2 millimeters or one-third of the intercuspal distance. The intercuspal distance is measured from the cusp tip of the buccal to the cusp tip of the lingual divided into three and you get your one-third. So approximately, this is the width of your dovetail. Your isthmus, the narrowest portion of your preparation, is around one millimeter or one-fourth of the intercuspal distance. So this is your cusp tip, your cusp tip, divided into four. 
So more or less, this is how uh, wide your isthmus should be. Same principle with your previous tooth, the buccal and lingual walls are slightly converging towards the occlusal. Buccal and lingual wall because this is a pit and fissure cavity. The conversion should only be around 10, 10 degrees or less. So if this is your protractor, your 10 degrees is only up to here. So ganun lang. Ganun lang yung buccal and lingual walls. Your mission distal walls should be slightly diverging towards the occlusal. to 5 degrees. So, pag 2 to 5 degrees from this straight line, unti-unti lang, hanggang dito lang. Okay? Pulpal floor is flat and smooth and the depth of your pulpal floor from the cava surface margin this is your cava surface margin, the junction between your wall and the external surface is your cava surface margin. From the cava surface margin, your pulpal floor depth is 1.5 to 2 millimeters. In the actual patient, your reference point is not the cava surface margin, but the DEJ, the dentino enamel junction. From the DEJ, 0.5 to 1 millimeters from the DEJ will be your pulpal floor depth. Or we also describe that as 0.5 to 1 millimeter into the dentine. Again, 0.5 to 1 millimeter into the dentine. So, how do we check your preparation? Let me erase this one and let us have a mental image. Again, of your preparation for mandibular second premolar. For the outline form, you check that all pits and major developmental grooves are included. Preparation is centered on the central groove. Presence of graceful curves. And smooth flowing lines, no rugged edges, no sharp edges. Lateral extensions are correctly placed. Mischal and distal walls follow the crest of the marginal ridge. For the resistance form, pulpal floor is 0.5 to 1 millimeter in the dentine, or 1.5 to 2 millimeters from the cava surface margin. Pulpal floor is flat and smooth and is perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. Isthmus width is one fourth of the intercuspal distance or one millimeter. Michelin distal walls are midway between the crest of the corresponding marginal ridge and pit and they are slightly divergent occlusally. For the retention form, presence of Michelin and distal occlusal dovetail. The dovetail would serve as your retention lock to prevent movement of your restoration laterally or sideways. 
Bacal and lingual walls for the retention are slightly convergent occlusally. There are undercuts on the buccal and lingual walls. And before you submit your work, enamel walls and cavity margins are smooth. The cavity preparation is clean and moisture free. And the preparation outline is rounded. No sharp angles. If we try to fill this tooth with amalgam, this is how your filling would look like with a good outline form in your preparation. Please comment down your questions or comments. And thank you for watching. Good luck!